The next talk is uh, the modern web application developed with Apache Struts 2 uh, and uh, presented by René Gillen. And Johannes Keppert. Hey guys, nice to see you. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Apache Struts. Um, some of you may know. Um, we both are members of the PMC team, Apache Struts. I'm the PMC chair. Johannes is a PMC member. I'm an independent software development consultant and uh, diver. And yes, I'm uh, also a developer at a utility company and a martial art fan. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, I guess, uh, when we were trying to uh, prepare the demonstration code. Uh, we made a small photograph of us. So, um, most people, when I tell them that I'm uh, helping to maintain Apache struts, they um, start to get some weird reactions. Um, they ask themselves, isn't this the framework our forefathers used to use? Um, and actually, partly yes, of course. Um, but we're talking about struts too, which is something totally different. It's not the old crap. Um, we have totally new, I would say shiny new, <laughs> code base, um, which shares, I guess, no single line of code with Struts 1. So, what do we want to tell you? Um, first of all, we have some common stuff, of course, in the Struts framework, in the Struts 2 framework. Um, we build upon the web. Not too surprisingly, I guess, but um, we embrace the web with request and response, and we do not try to have any state in between. We say the state is between request and response, so we do not do like component-oriented frameworks you have on the other side of the web framework stacks. Um, we embrace it to be stateless most of the time. Of course, you can use set the session if you like, but uh, we embrace to be stateless as much as possible. Um, basically, Struts 2 is a model uh, view controller framework. So, um, behind a dispatcher, a front controller, something like this, um, who tries to uh, dispatch and uh, translate from the pure technology stack, the HTTP surflet request or whatever, to the framework layer where our code and our framework um, support lives. So we have some unique stuff, um, as we think. Um, first of all, we call ourselves an action-based framework. So we don't talk about model or controller that much. We say we have actions, and actually actions are, first of all, the controller logic uh, we write when we were doing struts to web applications, on the one hand, and on the other hand, it's the nearest part of our model. I say nearest part or next part because the model is more complicated than that in the struts to framework stack. We have... Um, not only the action as introduction or uh, first part of the model, we have a whole stack representing our model in the model view controller model or uh, paradigm. So um, the next thing is our front controller is not monolithic. Um, actually, there is only very, very small code base representing the technical part of the front controller dispatcher and all the framework I guess 80 to 90 percent of all the framework functionality lives in so-called interceptors which are organized to stacks and which can be reorganized or selected as you like so on the one hand we deliver a set of prepared and uh, already ready-made interceptors, but on the other hand, you are always um, able to write your own and um, have them in your own framework code, and 
you can not only focus on writing actions, views, and all that stuff, but you can also think of uh, doing cross-cutting uh, cross concerns and aspects, not in actions, but in interceptors you write on your own. And in the end, views, if we would say only we support views, it would a little bit easy. We think more in terms of um, really active, versatile, and semantic results, which have a view component, but are much more than just views. Um, so after all, we think we have a quite flexible and queen, uh, clean architecture with which you can get productive very soon, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, which you can extend yourself or bend to, what you ever, to whatever you want. So um, some of the sweet spots we would uh, highlight. Uh, first of all, we have a very, very good plugin system with many plugins around for, um, yeah, Steve Jobs always called it, uh, called it sorry, uh, there's an app for it. And you might say in Struts 2, there is a plugin for it. Uh, the core framework is quite complete, but we have many, many interesting plugins to look after, some of which Johannes will introduce later. Um, and we've got many, many solutions around for validation, for uh, type conversion, binding, uh, internationalization is, 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 we have, I think, very good solution for it. Um, and you have a small, um, yeah, MVC inside the MVC framework, which um, allows you to build high-level um, graphic user interfaces. Um, we have uh, things like uh, PDF, AJAX, JSON, whatever. I think I could go on forever with this, but um, actually, the best thing is to get the hands dirty and show a little bit of the stuff we have uh, inside the framework with an example application. Okay, thank you, Rene. <laughs> to demonstrate all the features provided by Struts2, uh, we both have developed the world most complex web application you have ever seen. At least. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our sponsor is SAP so, SAP, so we should call it Enterprise To-Do Manager. <laughs> so, let's take a look at it. So, I will start it. We use uh, GRebel. This allows us to code without any reload of the Tomcat server. So, that's our application. It's really simple. Uh, like many of you see, we are using Bootstrap in this example. Uh, the first is the, navi the navigation area. Then we have a form to add a new to-do. And Of course, we have. Uh, oh, Rene, how can I? <laughs> and we have a list. <laughs> uh, now our controls are gone. <laughs> for for all to dos. I think we have to switch now to some bigger resolution. No, no, doesn't help, right? Well, who wanted to use Bootstrap? <laughs> okay, Bootstrap, why Bootstrap? Bootstrap is uh, a great front end framework provided uh, firstly by uh, Twitter. Now the, the guys who created it uh, are gone from Twitter. It uh, we see it. Uh, it allows us to, uh, to create responsive web applications that allows in any resolution size, also for mobile devices. 
better off there, yeah. <laughs> And on the other side, um, uh, we have uh, we are developers, no designer, so we can uh, create uh, forms. They are looking good. They are uh, working uh, without any designer. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's look good. Now we see the controls. Thank you, Rene. <laughs> so let's add another. Um, and okay, after the show, and now, so set us our list of to dos. Uh, like you see, we use Ajax. This is uh, there is no rule page refresh. We only submit our to do, and the list is loaded automatically. So now we can change our row, <laughs> uh, our to-dos. We can add some additional information, like a due date. Okay, so slides should be ready yesterday. If you, if you want, you can extend the uh, window, the right, the right end. So, save, and we have, have some more information, and. If we like to use, uh, say, a category again, we can use uh, auto-completion, which resolves our currently categories. So, okay, sets from the front end. Let's take a look at the code. How does this work? How is the action uh, configured? We dive up into the... Uh, dive up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is ours? Uh, I will get you diving sometime. <laughs> In our Struts XML. Uh, many of you have seen this. With many thousands of lines of action mappings, we don't use it. Our Struts XML is as it includes only some constants to configure our application and we have a small stack only for interceptors. Which is, which is specially prepared for this example. You don't need to have this in place. Yes. So now, how is our action configured? Let's take a look at the main action, the to-do action. There's no notion. annotation. Um, we use conventions because we use a, a Struts convention plugin. So a, this is the first plugin I demonstrate. Um, this convention plugin scans all our classes, define it in the Struts XML. If this class extends the name ext action or implements the interface action, it is marked as an action. That's all. It and then lives behind URL. Okay. The mapping between the action, the Java action, and the GSP is a name. This is a convention. That's all. If I like to uh, have a other name than to do, or I have uh, more than one method. I can uh, use the action in Ocean. Provided by the convention plugin. And can here. Yeah. Have a special action name for our URL. This is what most people know as configuration by exception. So we have a convention, uh, which if you follow, Maven users know this, um, you don't have to configure anything. But if you need exceptions from the default, you can configure them. This is configuration by exception. 
I can use the same GSP or uh, other method is to rename also the GSP to my to-dos. And when I change the action, it also works. But the old one doesn't work anymore. So, the next uh, plugin I would like to dis uh, oh no, it's the next. Also a to-do. It was not a to-do if we can solve it. <laughs> Drink a beer or no, present, prepare some slides, it's done. Drinking beer is not resolved yet, no. <laughs> Um, like we see, there is no Ajax refresh. In this case, we use a JSON uh, asynchronous action. How it helps us trust to to solve this? We take a look at the done action. We can override the result. The default result is a dispatcher, a GSP, but we can also use the JSON result when we have uh, the JSON plugin in our class pass. So how, how does it look in our GSP? This is a GSP for our list. Here's our down link and the down URL is defined to the to do done action And we use uh, jQuery for this task. We have a Struts jQuery plugin. It's uh, not part of the Apache, but it's uh, part of the community. <laughs> if you want to know the maintainer, he's sitting here right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> we just define as a data type JSON, not HTML, and we can subscribe a topic. What shall be done when this action is successfully? Oh, we have one JavaScript. That's all. After submit, the task is done. Exactly this topic is executed, and our uh, uh, our topic uh, was added in another class to do done with, with a through line and the link to, uh, to done action was removed. <coughs> but notice that you are quite decoupled from the JavaScript code. So you have to subscribe, you have, you have to go into the document ready function, which is quite hard to do with some uh, tags. But uh, the other thing we have seen in the JSP are tags which encapsulate the jQuery stuff for you. So you don't have to know everything about jQuery. Oh, a little bit is always yeah, helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> the next subscribe topic is a remove topic. So how does it work? It only hides. And after the height of this uh, topic, it removes. Oh, I'm too tired. I don't drink a beer today. And after reload, we have to talk about this plan. <laughs> Our topics. So the next is uh, how uh, do we use Ajax with a GSP result? Um, we have linked this, uh, this this category to filter topics, uh, tasks by uh, a category. We like only to see the before task. You have seen this short. So. It's a more complicated view um, we have used for the example, but uh, the, the very nifty parts are quite easy to explain if you see them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have uh, just another link to the uh, to the list URL, which is filtering by the category. We simply give the category. So the next plugin 
I like to describe is a bootstrap plugin. It's a um, the jQuery plugin is a little bit uh, uh, large. It has many functions. It supports uh, uh, many use cases. But the bootstrap plugin is really simple. It only has uh, one tag to include the head stuff, to include the bootstrap GS, the necessary start. Um, the main actions is the uh, templates. To enable it, just put the plugin in your class path and say your form, your, st your struts form, is from the theme bootstrap. That's all. You see, this, uh, this is our form. We don't have any divs or, or no control, no buttons, no, no uh, labels. This is all defined by our tags. The normal struts text field tag or our uh, jQuery tags like date picker, our autocompleter. And when, if, if we like to control our, our uh, the display of our form, we don't use a horizontal form, we can use a vertical form. And now we have a vertical form. Uh, the, the labels are above the input fields. So, what's next? Um, uh, do we uh, want to talk a little bit about type conversion and stuff like this? Oh, uh, we can uh, try out uh, the, the, f the filter by uh, the list by the date. No, I just just wanted to show the, um, the the type conversion that we have in the added action, maybe for the save. Oh, it's, uh, it's, that's cool. What is our uh, our date picker? Our date picker is presented by a text, uh, a string. We don't have a date object at default, but in the in our item, the item itself is a model object object which is just a JPA entity class. And uh, what we will see now is that we don't, uh, some of you might know struts1, so mm, something like form beans, uh, you don't need them anymore, you just work on the model object itself. So what we will see now is that not only types get converted, basic types get converted just like, j uh, like date or uh, numbers or whatever, we do deep object conversion. So if we have a model object of type to do item, everything that comes in into the request will try to be placed in this to-do item. And this is what we see now when we look into the safe action. Okay. Thank you, Rene. Um, uh, safe action? Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, another great feature is a client validation. We see... Uh, we have a validation for our to-do item. We have here defined it by a method. We can also def uh, we can also use annotations for this. So validation is part of the uh, front controller stuff I was talking about. We have an interceptor stack which has one single um, part which is called validation interceptor. He resides in the configured stack and if we have either the validate me method in our action or we have um, annotations configured, then every validation happens and uh, going back delivering an input result rather than an a success result is done by the cross-cutting concern. Demonstrated. We just delete the title. Oh, you, you, you've you've just uh, deleted it. It was. I think it was I there. I've added the visitor. Ah, field. okay. We don't have uh, we don't have the to do item uh, configured with string uh, required string validator. Sure. I would say. So right. Should I, should I? Do this for you.
So now we're using declarative validation. So just like uh, JSR 303, uh, you might know, uh, bean validation, we have our own validation framework, which was in part um, uh, the pattern uh, 303 followed. Um, and uh, what we can do, we take the JPA class and annotate the validations we want to have. We now can also use JSR 303, so there is a plugin for it. Um, but we have very good annotations for validation. And it is also um, not only that the stack itself rejects what has to be saved, it's also the front controls that understand the validation. So as you see, uh, it's colored red and you see what the problem is right ahead without any configuration in the view. And you can use your validation definition for the server side and for the client side together. So. So now it works. Do you like to show the interceptor stack? Maybe I have another word for the safe action. Um, what we see in the safe action is um, I talked about the type conversion. So uh, you might wonder how the item is um, is actually saved. We expose the item via the getter and because it's exposed struts knows how to uh, set the properties based on the request parameters that are uh, sent so actually what we only have to do in the execute method is well save it we have the full item as we want to save it in the database and we can save it and uh, one, one more thing I want to show you is um, we use dependency injection overall in the framework. So uh, the framework has its own dependency injector written by Bob Lee, which is later was known as Juice. Um, and uh, you can use any dependency injection framework you like. So what we have configured here is Spring. We have a Spring service here and we just annotate it with inject. You can also use CDI or whatever you like. So. Um, Let's talk a bit about interceptors. Um, who of you know the open session in view pattern from Hibernate or JPA? The basic idea is, in a model view controller framework, you have the controller doing something with the database, uh, obtaining model objects from the database, and if you extend them to the view and render them in the view, you can get lazy initialization exception. Uh, which means that um, uh, the session is already closed when the view is rendered. So Hibernate and, and other JPA frameworks uh, propose a pattern called open session in view. Um, I'm a little bit of a hardcore guy. I believe in transactions. And I'm always using the pattern open transaction in view. So actually what I want with transactions is if there is mm, any kind of exception, I want to roll back automatically but I want to keep the transaction open. So what I could do now is write a, rep, a rep web filter and handle the exceptions there. But we would want to handle exceptions within the framework. So the last thing we would do in the framework stack is handle exceptions and present some nice view of the exception and not some uh, stack trace from Tomcat. So um, the next thing what we would want to do is if our Result, you know, you see, we have some semantic results here. Action success. So, what uh, we also support is something like input if validation failed or error. So, if you extend this pattern with a transaction, you can say, uh, well, if the framework result from the action invocation is input or error, then we can roll back the transaction. So. What I'm trying to say to you is we want to solve the problem not with a filter, we want to solve it in the framework. We want to build the framework differently than we have found it when we uh, uh, took it from the Maven dependencies. So, the first thing is I write an interceptor, which is here the transactional interceptor. Um, 
it works pretty much like a filter, web filter. If you have uh, written a web filter, then you are pretty done. The only thing um, is that what comes back from an invocation in the filter stack or, stack or interceptor stack is the actual result the actions are using to represent or to, to map the right view result to display. So what we do here is we check for a transaction manager, with a, which is a spring transaction manager. Even here, dependency injection works. Then we create a transactional context, which is the technical stuff uh, down there. Um, we create a try-catch block to react on the exception. And uh, then we do the actual action invocation, grab the result, and check if it is one of input or error. If yes, we will mark the transaction as rollback only. And in any case, we will go down and end the transaction with a status. And then we will pass the result back to every, uh, to, to, to the stack itself. We are part of the stack um, of interceptors. We pass the result and uh, let others, other interceptors work with it and let the request response um, thing happen. And uh, yeah, well, when the exception is thrown, then uh, we will just roll back um, the uh, transaction as well. So what do we have to do to incorporate this? Um, when we are uh, working with uh, our XML, sometimes we want to use the XML because we have some configuration which uh, you cannot tag to an action or stuff like this. So um, this is the part where we create our own interceptor stack, our own front controller, where we do something. We, we have a default. So now I'll show you something nice of the IDE integration in EDEA. I have full struts to integration there. I can browse to the packaged configuration files. Everything you see here, you can reconfigure if you like. So what we do, we take a default stack as configured somewhere here. Well, it looks like pretty much like this. And we build our own stack based on this. And just here at the very first part of the incoming request and the very last of the outgoing response, we have an exception handler. And just before or after how you look at it, um, we have uh, the transaction handling. So we can guarantee that during both controller logic and view logic um, is, is happening, is, is living. Uh, we have an open transaction and we are doing fine. So every time you have some cross-cutting concerns and aspect-oriented aspect -oriented thinking, you can use it inside the framework and reconfigure it. Um, one, one nice feature. I'm, I was about to forget. Um, we have very, very good uh, integration for internationalization. So um, we want to um, go away from hard-coded strings and use resource bundles. Um, there are pretty many locations where I can place them. There is logic that automatically searches for them. But what I do now is say um, the item properties we have, I want to um, have labels for it. So what I'm doing now is um, I say item dot uh, topic. is to do. Now I know uh, what this microphones are good for. Um, first off, so the second thing we do is in our to-do edit JSP, 
we want to have this label we see here, this label, not hard-coded in the view, but we want to take it from the resource bundle. So all of a sudden, I named the resource entry just like the property here, item.topic. And uh, there's a reason for it. Because now, if I change this attribute from name to key, this does three things. First, it determines the name of the parameter that is sent in the respond uh, in the request. Second, it uses the current value of the item topic property. And third, if there is a resource bundle defining a key named item dot uh, topic, it uses it for the label. So, if I go here and go to edit, then you see it's there. But you ha don't have to believe me because it's the same text. But most likely, it's different now. It is. Thank you. So, next let us code some jQuery. We like to filter our to-dos by date. We test if we have a, d a due date in our action. And if yes, we replace the existing result with a new URL and a link to the list. As a parameter, we give the due date as known. What does we need to change in the list action? This is only except categories. So let's enable the due date. We need a setter for the due date. And we should respect it in our criteria. That's all. After this, we have a link and we can filter by date. Um, like you see, we are using really simple views in our actions. There's no uh, expanded head with many uh, JavaScript and CSS includes. So Johannes, where does the Bootstrap plugin live? Wow! <laughs> it's we are using SiteMesh. SiteMesh is a decorator for, our, for all GSPs which are not requested via Ajax. You might guess we have a plugin for it. Yes, we have a plugin. <laughs> so, all GSPs are decorated with a main GSP. And here are now our configuration for the bootstrap heat tag. And we have a heat tag for the, uh, for the jQuery plugin. If you like to use jQuery UI also, uh, which is our local, uh, do we have a local uh, a default indicator? And uh, so the greatest thing on jQuery UI is you can create, customize it for your company, for your organization via the theme roller. And it's simple to override the default theme. Huh? Ah, yeah. The jQuery theme with, uh, with your custom theme, but I don't demonstrate it. 
Actually, this is the really, really boilerplate code you have in your HTML. And uh, if, if you're using this uh, J JavaScript stuff and all the nice CSS stuff, uh, no one will save you from it, from, from designing some HTML. But you can save the boilerplate code when you are writing your views because you are using a decorator pattern and only code it once, and then you're done. The next... Uh Plugin I like to <laughs> show you is a mobile plugin. It's also from the jQuery project. We see where it has a decorator for mobile view. And there is a tag library for Struts, Struts jQuery mobile integration. In this example, it's only one action, only the list of the to-dos, but, but your guess, this is really good looking on your mobile device. It's uh, jQuery Mobile is great developed. I like it very much, and it's easy to create your own mobile application based on a web. So, um Sometimes, from time to time, you will um, have some um, uh, problems working uh, with all that stuff, and you are looking for what you uh, what you're doing wrong. So, even in this case, we have some support for you. Um, there is something called the S debug tag, which, if you are using it. Oh, which, if I would close correctly, thank you. So, if I use this one, then I get a link. And if I click on this link, I see the whole Struts 2 environment, which is um, in the back. and, and if I'm a little bit um, uh, longer into Struts 2 based development, I can read this <laughs> and do something useful with it. So, um, we could show you a lot more, but I guess uh, most of the things, um, the sweet spots we've talked about, we could sh hopefully we could show a little bit. Uh, do you have any questions? Not too much. Okay, um, the example you have seen is um, available at GitHub. Um, his repository, Yogep, starts to to do example. If you like, you can check it out there. We will uh, polish it a little bit more, even more. It is quite polished, I guess. And if you like to contact us. Um, you see our Twitter handles, our mails, and uh, if you like, just talk with us after this presentation. Thank you very much, and thanks for the guys providing all those nice pictures, helping me to uh, make this presentation looking hopefully a little bit good. Thank you. <laughs>